Hi, and welcome back to the third part of the OS Top 10. We're going to look at the A3 sensitive data exposure today. So let's get on with it. So the all agenda is to uh, talk about sensitive data exposure. And I recommended that you all can look at the source I display here on the screen on the OS.org page and read up onto the actual descriptions on sensitive data exposure. So what is all this sensitive data exposure and how has this become a bigger problem over the years? Okay, so web developers, system developers, I, I mostly web developers, you are tasked to use frameworks and APIs and third party whatever and whatnot all the time. Uh, your education, your friends, your company, uh, everyone just wants to use new stuff all the time and whenever new stuff is put onto the to the frying pan uh, as you say um, it is bound to have errors and security flaws <clears throat> so when i say this has become a worse uh, thing over the years it's basically all about that uh, a lot of frameworks and apis have been introduced all the time and the same flaws and security issues are you know, just in a way inherited down to 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 the new framework or API. So I would suggest that you know sticking to one a good th two or three good uh, frameworks or APIs that is that's been on the market for for a long time um, that can that is being patched and updated still. <clears throat> Another thing is that you know more stuff is accessible from the public. More APIs, more cloud solutions, more security, more things to secure is bound to just be more insecure. It is the natural way that things are. So um, let's assume that you that you develop something from vanilla, um, which is you know the old ways. It does take more time. Uh, however, it 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 also Give you the possibility and opportunity to to secure a system and correct the small flaws the one language or technology you chosen have for example react and angular have leaked a lot of data um, but in the old days these these kind of features uh, you can find in the newer frameworks and libraries were kind of hidden because uh, and of course also uh, some companies and, and owners did actually have a, a less secure path because of uh, non-informed developers which is also why i think it's a really good idea that you go and read the documentation on the os.org to get the full picture so i guess this leads to the, the whole idea frameworks and apis are they good or bad well in my eyes I, I think frameworks and APIs are, are, are brilliant because it makes it makes things done uh, quite easy and you can share your data and your data flow with other parties. Nothing wrong with that. You just need to make sure that you secure the connection uh, from your API or your framework and whatever happens out of bounds. So whenever data flows away from your server, away from your network, you don't really know what happens to that data. So you can you could probably say that, but I used, for example, a CTPS uh, certificate. So I'm sending my, my data or secure connection using a secure HTTPS uh, protocol, right? And then it arrives at the destination in a, in a secure format. But what happens when the, the destinational uh, part sends the data somewhere else or back to you? They also use a, 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 a HTTPS certificate or, 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 or did they not do that? Did they use some third party plugin or some, some old uh, API that, that is insecure? Now, this is something you need to, to verify and find out before you use frameworks, APIs and, and, and most importantly third party stuff or you connect yourself to other cloud solutions. This is a really good spot to look at when you look for sensitive data exposure. 
So what is it? Which kind of data could be leaked? Uh, well, credit card information, credential, other personal data, browsing habits, financial information, and so on are all a part of sensitive uh, data exposure. Um, so as the slideshow also says that if the data is not correctly handled by the application, data exposure is serious risk. And if you leak data, it's a really good chance that your business will, will not well, be open for business for that much longer. So, so I, I strongly suggest that you look at this, also with, with some of the new data protection laws, which varies uh, depending on, on which country you're from. This could uh, be a bigger risk for your business if you do not take care of the sensitive data exposure. Um, and of course, reputational risks, if it occurs, uh, meaning if you have a sense of data exposure, uh, your reputation for your business uh, will uh, skyrocket uh, really fast. And all of a sudden, in a few days or a week, it will, everyone will know if they're a customer to you or they think about being a customer or to use your service or whatever business you have. And they will probably think otherwise. So. That's a really good idea, again, to, to look for sensible data exposure. All right, so if you put in some controls that can, you know, mitigate your way from, from having sensible, sensible uh, data exposure, then um, please make sure that it's a good quality controls and not some, some poor quality. Uh, that could be uh, software installed to, to detect uh, traffic you're sending uh, from your network and out or traffic you are receiving, for example, to verify, well, did they actually use the uh, HTTPS certificate? Did they encrypt the data? Is it serialized data? What is it? How is it the format of the data package you're receiving? So if the, the controls you're putting in, uh, if that is software, you've got to make sure that it's, it's um, some good quality controls. All right, so how common is this? Um, there are some evidence that suggests that very few apps have a pessimistic encryption policy. Uh, most data is stored as plain text, if you look at it that way. And it sounds scary. It is scary. So, so I've seen my share of, of uh, applications that actually do not encrypt their sensible or personal identifiable data at all, which is a big problem and um, let's say that someone accidentally leaves the door open behind the scenes right um, then everything could be exposed and all leaked or if someone got access to the database through a application security issue let's say a SQL injection or something like that just handing them the data in clear text is kind of like begging to take my data so it's a really bad idea um, another thing could be encryption. Uh, it is usually used on applications, but sometimes uh, not all the way. So, so when you when you apply uh, security rules and controls and measures to protect your own data, try and use the uh, security uh, design principle called defense in depth, which in uh, terms uh, means that you should not rely uh, on security. And just a single point so you need to apply it on different levels and layers in order to have a full secure application it's like looking at it as an onion if you open an onion inside there's many layers around it so that would be the way to to make to make sure that your encryption is from the start to the end yes uh, another part could be weak uh, cryptography um, it of course less less of a risk, but um, if you're using weak cryptography algorithms, there's a pretty good chance that you you might end up being cracked in a certain way, just like CrackStation does it, or others you just record a lot of hashes or encryptions, and then you can basically just run the the, the code, which in, which essentially is just a a ongoing process that the tries to you know is that the key is that the key is that the key and so on and eventually it will just crack it how is this data then exposed 
Um, it could be done by intrusion. Let's assume that you have a weakness in your operating system. It's a very normal thing that uh, people uh, extend or they, they, whenever you get a patch, for example, from Microsoft or whatever operating system you're using, many people will reject that update and maybe press the button that, that says, uh, remind me next day or the next week. And within that time, a potential security risk could be exposed. So you should, you should, you should always think that hackers do know all these kind of information because they are the experts. They've been, they've been waiting for it. It might even be a zero day exploit. And if you don't know what a zero day exploit is, it's um, an exploit that isn't known for to the, the, the virus vendors or the security you know, professionals uh, that is paid for their business, like real white hat guys. Could also be stuff like phishing. Uh, you're receiving an email from somewhere, you know, spoofed to, well, you may, you might, you might think it's it's from your boss, and, and you're you're tricked into thinking that well, the link the link in the email points to a secure website which is trusted, and then you do something there. You maybe in insert information or the website you're using uh, might install something on your browser because of a open browser security risk. So that might be a way. Social engineering poses a really great uh, threat these days. And in most cases, uh, social engineering is the way these days to actually get started on your um, malicious interest, uh, let's say just uh, for a company. Um, and there are many, many more, but uh, I just want to mention, uh, I just wanted to mention a few. So um, these uh, all require you to educate yourself or your staff or employees, uh, especially social engineering. Uh, when the company will people uh, will people meet meet the first? Whether that's the entrance, and in the entrance there might be a receptionist or who who. who of, of what you're using, and and every every person should be educated to understand what these risks actually pose, and 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 how you should mitigate uh, away from them. So how to fix all this? Well, um, you should take a considered view on on, on data value, and uh, you should remove uh, data you don't need. Learn about encryption. Encryption is uh, generally lightweighted, so you should use it by default. Consider multiple levels of encryption. Do not store encryption keys with data. Use hardware protection of keys uh, where possible, and be careful uh, where you could get your advice from. Now, this is, uh, of course, a lot of different uh, things to remember whenever you are trying to fix something. So again, I suggest that you look at the OWASP.org rules and uh, read the text thorough and, and get a really good understanding. It's very difficult for you to, to cover all fields when you're working with information security, but if you're a developer or you're a system administrator, well, there are many different things you could do. And one of them is to inform others and uh, bring people in the ring well, the part of the job you have. The minimum of measures, measures that should be implemented could be stuff like uh, encrypt all sensitive data or implement some two-factor identification or MFA, multi-factor authentication, which in terms is, is kind of the same. The dispose all of sensitive data. So if you actually have some, some sensitive data stored in your application, if you don't need it, well, Delete it, right? Delete, disable autocomplete and caching. So if your application got some autocomplete feature going on, uh, or maybe even caching some some stuff people typed in, disable it. Have your backups and plan for data loss or data theft. So what will you do if the S hits the fan? Uh, well, then you have some backups, right? Uh, if you don't, well. That's a really, really bad thing for you. So that's the minimum of measures 
you should be doing. Third agents could be stuff like uh, internal employees or partners, it could be malware, cyber criminals. Most of, most importantly, it could be insecure practices, and in many cases, most security issues starts with a human. So educate your personal, educate people, educate yourself. That is the way forth if you want to create uh, secure applications or implement security. Another thing that I see sometimes is, uh, this, this is for the developers, they hard code data like tokens, secret keys, passwords in the source code. I understand that it, it looks really good uh, when you do it. And, um, but it, it is not secure at all. So, so don't do that. <laughs> Locking sensitive data and server locks is uh, another thing that should be avoided. Uh, never lock stuff in your server locks that actually can uh, provide uh, any hackers or someone that maybe have access to the locks, uh, understanding an overview or uh, a leak of personal information that, that could lead to, to even further uh, malicious attacks. Transmitting, transmitting sensitive information in plain text, I think we talked about that already, it's a really bad idea, don't do it. <laughs> Using old or weak cryptography algorithms, we kind of also covered that, but uh, to put up to put up a bit more uh, information on the topic is, uh, I see many developers Developers are using the MD5 algorithm still, which is a big no-no. Uh, I even see them using something like um, SHA-1 or SHA-128 and stuff like that. You know, it's, it's it's the same. You have to use some some salt and, and you may, maybe even some pepper in order to uh, create the most secure hash for your personal identifiable information, which could be passwords, or maybe even depending on where your value is in your company, of course. So the old summary is do not store information if, if it's not necessary, encrypt sensitive data, and learn from others' mistakes. So next time, we will talk about the A4, the fourth, <clears throat> um, vulnerability in the OS top 10. We will discuss that. It's called XML external entities or short XXE. So until then, I'll see you next time.